Howdy, y'all. I'm Dr. Jeff Jarvis. Let's talk fast for this PRM about fast rhythms, tachycardias. Now, a little background, tachycardias can be from either an intrinsic rhythm problem, something like aberrant conduction pathways or multiple competing pacemaker sites or even pissed off irritable tissue. Or it can be compensatory in response to something else, something like infection, hypovolemia, anemia, or maybe drugs. It's important that we try to differentiate between these two causes because treatment differs based on the cause. And history is incredibly important here. If the patient has trauma, well, I would hope that would be obvious. If you have a patient involved in a motor vehicle collision with a busted pelvis and blood all over the place and they're tachycardic, hopefully that will be relatively obvious that that is a compensatory problem that doesn't need a denison or amiodarone. Other things may not be as obvious. Infection, for example, if you have a history of fever, if there's some fever going on, cough, chills, that is likely that the tachycardia is compensatory. And when the tachycardia is compensatory, treatment is aimed at the underlying cause. If they've had multiple similar episodes and they tell you it's because of SVT, and by the way, last time I had SVT, they did a denison and it fixed it and it's SVT, and dude, the issue is SVT. Sometimes that makes it more likely it's SVT. You know, when you're taking a history, sometimes complex issues become simple but only because you ask. So asking, taking that history, that's important. Now in terms of treatment, basics should obtain a 12 lead ECG and take a history, paying particular attention to presence of infection or signs of volume depletion, things like profuse vomiting or diarrhea or GI bleeding. And they need to ask about prior episodes. You can go ahead and preemptively place multifunction pads for unstable patients that you think may need cardioversion. If your patient is under 65 and has a regular rhythm and a rate faster than 150 and say, I've had SVT before and you don't think there's infection or hypovolemia or trauma, then there are some non-invasive maneuvers that you can attempt to help resolve the tachycardia. These are Valsalva maneuvers, things like bearing down or blowing hard into a 10cc syringe. Now we're going to create an upcoming Valsalva procedure, a specific document that talks about these different ways and create a video that walks you through how to do these. The key thing that I want to be clear about, though, is that any form of carotid massage is specifically prohibited. Do not do it. It's dangerous. It can cause strokes. Don't do it. Don't ever, ever, ever touch my drum set. You understand? Don't go in there. And Don't touch it! These other techniques that I'm talking about, non-invasive techniques, they can be effective, they're benign, and sometimes the patients are doing them themselves. They're definitely worth the attempt, and you can do these non-invasive things that don't involve touching the carotid, even without a monitor. Paramedics should interpret the EKG and they should think about giving a fluid bolus if that's appropriate. If you think the rhythm is multifocal atrial tachycardia, MAT, well, then don't treat that rhythm. Treat the underlying condition, like, say, COPD exacerbation or hypoxia. This is actually a board review question for us. What is the treatment for MAT? And there are all sorts of things. The answer, of course, it's always C, but it is treat the underlying rhythm or underlying cause, not the rhythm. Let's talk unstable tachycardias in terms of other treatments. If the patient is hemodynamically unstable, whether it's narrow complex or wide complex, regular or irregular, if that tachycardia is hemodynamically unstable, meaning signs of shock or hypotension, then the treatment is synchronized cardioversion. Now, synchronized cardioversion is a lot like pacing bradycardias. No hypotension, no electricity, no electricity, no hypotension, no hypotension, no electricity. They need to be hypotensive. That's what we mean by hemodynamically unstable. 
Also, if there are consistent P waves in front of each and every QRS and only one P wave per QRS, that's a sinus tachycardia. This is not the protocol you're looking for. These aren't the droids you're looking for. These aren't the droids we're looking for. Treat the underlying cause of the sinus tachycardia instead. But you're gonna cardiovert appropriately. When you're cardioverting, be sure you hit that sync button and be sure you see the little sync marker on the monitor for each and every QRS complex. If you don't see that marker, if you're not in sync mode and you hit the zap button, you're going to get unsynchronized cardioversion and that's defibrillation. And if you defibrillate a tachycardia that has a pulse, you run the risk of inducing ventricular fibrillation if the shock happens to land at exactly the right time, or maybe the wrong time. Anyway, the wrong part of repolarization, the T wave. This is the R on T phenomenon, and it can take something that's bad, SVT, and make it into something that's really bad, like VFib. So let's not do that. What do you say? Synchronized cardioversion. The other thing to remember is that if you synchronize and you get the beep, 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 synchronized thing and you shock, the synchronization is going to turn off and the default mode for the next shock will be defibrillation. So you have to make sure you're in sync mode each and every time you go zap of a perfusing tachycardia. Unless otherwise configured, the unit automatically exits sync mode after each shock. To reactivate sync mode, press the sync button again on the front panel. Now, if you're able to, please get a 12 lead before you cardiovert. That can really help our cardiology colleagues determine exactly where the lesion is, and that can help them come up with a better preventative situation, a better preventative cure. Now, those were unstable tachycardias. Let's talk about stable tachycardias. And for these, the treatment differs by rhythm regularity and QRS width. At the ALS level, we treat regular narrow complex tachycardias with adenosine. Start with 12 milligrams in adults and repeat it at 18 milligrams. And you gotta give it as a rapid push. You gotta slam it in there and flush it in there. Otherwise, it's not going to be effective because adenosine has such a short half-life. Now, adenosine's very effective, but it's uncomfortable. Patients really dislike this. And because of this, the initial approach to adult SVT at the advanced level is diltiazem, equally effective and much better tolerated. Now, when it comes to kids, adenosine is going to be our go-to solution, not diltiazem, even at the advanced level. And that's because pediatricians recommend against dilt. So for adults with regular or irregular rhythms, mostly SVT or AFib with RVR, make sure that there is a narrow QRS complex and a rate above 150 and a blood pressure above 120, then you can give diltiazem at 0.25 milligrams per kilogram, slow IV push over two minutes with a maximum single dose of 20 milligrams. The faster you give it, the more likely you are to get hypotension. So please go slowly. And I know in EMS and in the emergency department, we're not very good at slow. I always joke that we have two speeds, adenosine and not adenosine. DILT is very much not adenosine. Spread it out over two minutes. Now you can repeat the same dose if the rhythm didn't convert after five minutes. And just like with cardioversion, if there are clear and consistent P waves before each and every QRS complex, at sinus tachycardia, treat the underlying cause, not the rhythm. Now you may wonder why I'm stressing this over and over and over again. It's for a reason, and the reason is what we see in QI reviews. So I just, I trust y'all and know you're going to do the right thing, but I just want to make the expectations clear and make clear you understand it. these drugs just A, don't work, and B, are not helpful for sinus tachycardias. Now let's get to wide complex tachycardias, whether regular or irregular. The treatment here at the advanced level is amiodarone, 150 milligrams, mixed 
as an infusion. Now, if you suspect your wide complex tachycardia is torsades, so you have amp um, polymorphic VTAC, so your complexes get big, they get little, they get big, they get little, they appear to be twisting around a point, that's torsades. Treat that with magnesium. For adults, it's two grams slow IV push, or for kids, 25 to 50 milligrams slow IV push with a max dose of two grams for pediatric patients. Now, it occurs to me I didn't talk about pediatric doses for deltiazem. That's because we don't do it. We don't give DILT for pediatric patients. And I didn't talk about pediatric doses of adenosine. Just look those up. As a matter of fact, for all pediatric patients, just look up the dose. Let's be safe. Certainly what I do in the emergency department. Now, one last time, if the rhythm is sinus tach, or if you suspect the etiology is infection, hypovolemia, or trauma, don't treat the rate with antiarrhythmics. Treat the underlying etiology. All right, guys, that is it. I told you this would be fast, just like the rhythms we're treating. As always, thank you for watching, and thank you for what you do for our community every day. Take care, y'all.